Hi folks. Um, I've been making flower pots for the past month, taking a break from making tableware and cooking pots at stoneware temperatures. Um, these are mid-range uh, flower pots. They're going to be a little porous when they're finished. Um, they're going to be fired in the wood kiln. And uh, I really am enjoying it. I make about five different sizes, and this is the second size from the bottom. We make pots that will fit inside pots that will fit inside pots. There's going to be no glaze involved in these, which is uh, really a, a sort of lovely way to work. Anyway, one of the things I've done is I've researched uh, many flower pot makers from across history, uh, many of them coming from England. And I look at these old flower pots and a few contemporary ones and I see different ways of treating the rims. And I've shown on Facebook recently a few different rims and uh, so I've made some pots, uh, pre-made them. Uh, some of them are leather hard, some of them are real soft. I'll explain as I go along. But I want to show you how I do these rims. So if you come on in here, this is what I call roping. And basically I've got a, a flat rim that's kind of tapering from the wall of the pot outward and uh, not real thin here but not real thick either. I'm using a sort of damp hand on the inside as support and I'm going to use this part of uh, my first finger and just sort of get a rhythm going and twist it up. Now I put a line right here at um, just inside the rim that's a stop point. That's a visual stop point for me as a maker. And it, it certainly helps. Otherwise, my roping sort of rolls around the rim, not with any regularity. So I use a slightly damp finger, not soaking wet, but just so it's not real sticky. And I just start a push. And as I push, I twist my finger. And I stop each twist when I see the top of the rim get twisted as the one before it. And it's a rhythm thing. You just keep moving around the pot just keep twisting. It takes a little while to do these. Now I don't want to make my flower pots so ornate that they compete with the flowers that are planted in them. Kind of like tableware. I don't make tableware that competes with the food if I can help it. I think it helps if you don't drink a lot of coffee when you do this. So I'm going to straighten up the inside rim a little bit because my finger was constantly pushing against it. And then I'm going to deal with this rim right here, which I created as I threw the pot. And I'll put a little decoration down below also. So that's a a very small roping technique. Now this ridge right here which I created when I threw the pot and this line down here I'm going to decorate a little bit with this what we call a coggle and it's an old British decorating tool. Um, it's made of clay and uh, I make them with my texture wear boards. Um, one thing about it I, I can do it or anybody can do it on um, leather hard or freshly thrown pots. But if you use it on a freshly thrown pot, you've got to wet it. And I only really want one or two revolutions. And down here, I have a space to put a roulette, rouletted pattern. It's just something to take your eye from the foot of the pot to the rim of the pot and back and forth. Okay, let me show you a couple more. 
Okay, this flower pot, I left a ridge here and about three quarters of an inch above it, I created a kind of lined rim or rim with an indent in it and um, I'm going to connect the two together. Now I work on this pot to do the decorating of the rim, I work like a clock, uh, 12, 6, 3, 9, 2, 5, 4, 1, whatever. But you'll see what I do here. I'm going to put my fingertip in opposite this ridge and pull this down to it and just sort of wipe it. The same thing again. Let me get my You can stop any time you like, which is where I always have problems. So I'm coming across from that one. I could certainly stop there, but let's do a few more. That's kind of interesting. This particular flower pot, it has a ridge that I left, created while I was throwing, which I might coggle later, put an indent on it. But I'm going to deal with this rim. And this is just what I call a pinched rim. And for me personally, this decoration is a little bit on the line of being too decorative for a flower pot. But it is a traditional way to decorate them. What I'm doing is I'm putting my thumb under the rim and my two fingers on top and just squeezing them together in a pattern all the way around. And of course you've got to do this while the, the clay is pretty soft. And realize that when you do this, you're actually stretching the clay outward. So if your original rim is too curved, you're going to get the whole thing laying down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it back up by just a slow revolution and a little pressure from a rib or from a sponge. Use a coggle on this thing. And a little bit down here. Doesn't take much to change a flower pot from something very simple to something very elaborate. Now I want to point out one thing. When I made my rim, the rounded rim, I took the pointed end of a stick and I cut a line or just pressed a line into the edge of the rim and that creates that second visual shadow which which I really like okay one more to go this is the fourth sample of roping or decorating um, this is a solid rim often when I make rims that are rounded I'm going to uh, roll the rim, pull it up quite thin and roll it over to create the roundness and tuck it up under here to seal it. But it's hollow so I've got to puncture it. But this one's solid. Um, I find it works better to have a solid rim for this kind of roping. This is just a piece of dowel. It's nothing fancy. Um, I've sanded it so it's really smooth. And what I'm doing is I'm starting in one place and again it's about rhythm. So I'm starting in one place and I'm pushing and turning as I go. So once you start, you try and maintain the angle and the twist. 
Now I've seen this done on wet pots with a finger and I'm not that skilled yet. So that's kind of next coming. But the little twist is important because that's what gives you the rope look. Otherwise you just end up with a notched rim. And again, these things all take a little bit of time. Um, you have to be willing to invest the time and uh, learn from it. Every time I do these, I learn something else, which is kind of cool. You know, these are the sort of things I teach at workshops. If, um, if your group wants to learn more, give me a shout. Okay, this I'm going to straighten up inside also. Come back. Now this, this pot was made yesterday afternoon and left uncovered in my shop overnight. And it's just the right consistency. It's not tacky um, or sticky. Just soft enough to make the impression without the clay sticking to the tool. Okay, I'm going to take another coggle, decorate down below here, and decorate here. Okay, here's, here's one more quite simple uh, decorating, room decorating technique. Again, I'm going to use this coggle I made. You can make them, I make, this is bisque fired. Um, the clay won't stick to it very easily unless it's sopping wet clay. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to toggle this area and toggle this. I'm not sure what I'm going to do in between there yet, but I want to show you how it works. And what I've discovered is let the rim get soft leather hard and then go at it with a dry toggle this time, not a wet one. If you keep the coggle pressed and move it, you get a consecutive roping effect. If you pick it up and move it, you get different facets of coggle. So, And down here, Now I'm thinking, what am I going to do next on this thing? I could put a lot more on it. Um, I think I'm going to coggle this area. And that's probably it for that one. So, quite a simple little tool. Not difficult to make. And there you have it. Some weird rims. Mm -hmm. <laughs>